Coming up, I'll be showing you an elegant interpretation of an equation you've probably seen in chem class. It predicts how much stuff you get at the end of a chemical reaction, given the energy you gain or lose during the reaction. And if you join me in this video, you'll come to realize a beautiful connection. Probability is the true essence of chemistry. Let's get started. At its heart, chemistry happens just because some things are more likely than others. A drop of dye mixes spontaneously in water because there are more ways of spreading out and collapsing inwards. When a ball is dropped, some of the potential and kinetic energy are converted to heat because it gains access to more forms of energy, and it doesn't plop back to where it came from just because there are less ways of it happening in reverse. The same idea also applies to chemical reactions, choosing one way to react over another, with the yield leaning towards the side that has more access to more possible arrangements. So the fact is that every process in the universe is governed by things increasing in the number of ways in which they can be arranged, simply because it's more probable. The physical quantity that captures this is entropy, and is proportional to the natural log of the number of ways things can happen, omega. In the context of chemical reactions, things react back and forth between products and reactants until they reach a certain equilibrating ratio and that maximizes the entropy. And my goal is to show you that by looking at chemistry from the lens of probability, the formula it leads to allows you to make the connection between two different realms, the realms of quantities and product yields and the more abstract realm of stored up energy. So as you've seen just now, there are a lot of examples we can start from, but our end goal formula is for describing chemical reactions. For starters, let's use a simple reaction. We're going to be looking at the chemical equilibrium using A and its excited form, A star, which is just the higher energy form of A. Although our example might be simple, the method we're going to be invoking to figure out our end goal equation will yield a much more versatile result. It can capture not only two different energy levels, but as many as you'd wish. And we'll be using the many energy level model for a lot of our reasoning throughout this video. Then we'll apply those arguments to our more specific two level case. Let's say there are seven molecules. Each molecule can choose to be in any one of the levels. And there are many ways to arrange them amongst the energy levels. In other words, omega. If there are seven molecules, there are seven factorial ways of arranging them. But by doing that alone, we're assuming that the, all the molecules are individually different, which for the sake of chemistry, they aren't. So we have to divide out by the number of ways in which they can be arranged at each level. In general, if there are n molecules, we divide them by the possible arrangements in each level, denoted by their subscripts. You may have noticed different distributions of molecules across the energy levels affects omega, and hence the entropy. And the distribution in this case of our chemical reaction can be captured by the ratio between A star and A. Can you start to see a connection now? Of course, there is a better way than manually sifting through all the possible arrangements. We can simply find whenever nudging the entropy by ds no longer results in an increase of entropy, or ds is equal to zero, which also equates to d log of omega is equal to zero. And since log of omega is affected by the number of molecules in all the possible levels, we would have to add up all the possible nudges from all the possible levels. All we have to do now is rewrite log of omega using a little bit of algebra, then plugging it back in. But there are two caveats before we can continue. First, the total energy must be conserved regardless of the distribution. Say you're only given three energy points and two particles, and let's say each energy level is one energy point above the previous. You can have one ball on level 2 and one ball on level 1, since the total energy is still 3. But you can't have one with 3 energy points and leave the other with just 1. In other words, if you sum up all the changes in the energy contained at each level, they should all cancel out to 0, 
the conservation of energy, essentially. Two, we're assuming the total number of particles don't change, and likewise, summing up all the changes in occupancy should all cancel out to zero. We can include these constraints by saying that they contribute to some amount alpha and negative beta in our sum. This method is known as Lagrange's method of undetermined multiplers, the details of which are beyond the scope of this video, but it allows you to essentially pretend all the levels are independent and individually equal to zero. And now we plug in our definition of omega and solve this equation. And after a lengthy bit of calculus and algebra, we've arrived at this formula here. But we're so close to finding our final formula. The question is, what is beta? Now, the actual derivation to uncovering beta would require us to know a lot of concepts from quantum and statistical mechanics, and that would make our video three hours long. So instead, I'm going to provide the conceptual view of it. Let's say you use the equation to calculate the distribution of energy amongst all the levels. You can see that by decreasing the beta, the distribution becomes more and more dispersed. Now, intuitively speaking, that means that there must be something that is adding energy to the molecules to push it up the levels, right? And that energy comes from temperature, since one of the properties of temperature is that it not only tells us about the average energy of an object, but it also tells you how spread out the energy is. In our case, that would mean beta is inversely proportional to temperature. Specifically, it's equal to 1 over kBt where KB is the Boltzmann's constant. And that is our final piece to the puzzle. Now, let's constrict our view back to two reactions. The K in the final equation is the equilibrium constant, and it is the ratio between A star and A. So if we take our equation and set it for the energies and the populations of A and A star, then divide the equations by each other, and after a few arrangements, we've now arrived at the equation we've set out to find. So let's backtrack a little bit, and let's just realize that this equation actually came from two main concepts, counting the number of ways the molecules can be distributed amongst energy levels, and the entropy increases because of the probability of it decreasing is almost zero. So you can see now that the driving force behind chemistry is just the mere extension of probability. And that real realization is just what I found while reading thermodynamics that I think would be valuable to share with all of you. This video is made in collaboration with my good friend, Professor Nick. You can find his YouTube channel down at doobly-doo. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.